What's going on here? My brand new Chevy Equinox EV won't charge. All right, so that was me last week, and I wasn't a happy camper when I discovered that I couldn't charge my Equinox EV from any of the chargers here in the state of Charge Garage. And as you know, I've got a lot of chargers here, but I did figure out what went wrong, and we're gonna talk about it here today. All right, so today's video is a follow-up to a video short that I put out just a couple of days ago when I experienced this issue. And I received a lot of comments, a lot of private messages. People are asking me, is there a problem with the Chevy Equinox? Is this a reason for me not to get one? So I felt it's necessary for me to put up a follow-up video to kind of explain what went on there and I think put people's mind at ease because there really isn't an issue with the Equinox EV. There could be a slight compatibility problem, but nothing that would prevent you from uh, ordering one, in my opinion. So first up, let's take a look at the short that I put out for those that haven't seen it. Hello from the state of No Charge Garage. I've had to temporarily rename the garage because my brand new Chevrolet Equinox EV will not charge. Well, at least from an AC power source. I tried it on my Tesla Universal Wall Connector, my Grizzle E, my Ford Charge Station Pro. It won't accept power from any AC charger. All I keep getting are these warnings on the dashboard that it's unable to charge. Now, I have been successful charging it on DC fast chargers since I've gotten it. I've been primarily doing that because I'm compiling a bunch of DC fast charging data. But today I was plugging it in on AC and to my surprise, it won't work. Not cool. Particularly not cool because I wanted to do the 70 mile an hour highway range test on the Equinox tomorrow morning. So that might be scrapped now. From the immortal words of Ricky Ricardo, GM, you got some splaining to do. So as I explained in the video, I tried to charge the Equinox EV from my Tesla Universal Wall Connector a 40 amp Grizzle E, and also my Ford Charge Station Pro. And all I kept getting was these messages that it was unable to charge, the vehicle can't charge, it's a problem with the charging station. And I tried for at least 30 minutes. Now, I know some people had said to me uh, online in the comments that, Tom, uh, the vehicle was probably charging. It was, there was a compatibility issue with the Tesla chargers. And what they've experienced is even though the car says it's not charging, it actually is. Well, that wasn't the case for me. I am 100% certain of it. I even left the vehicle plugged in for like 15 or 20 minutes to see if the state of charge went up 1% or 2%. It absolutely wasn't charging. I'm 100% certain of that. So whatever other people experienced, I was experiencing something different. And what troubled me was the fact that it wouldn't charge on any of the chargers. And I had previously only DC fast charged the Equinox because since I've gotten it, uh, I want to do a lot of DC fast charge recordings. So I don't charge at home. Uh, my biggest challenge now is just running the battery down enough so I can do another DC fast charge recording. I'm gonna do zero to 100, 10 to 80, 20 to 80, 30 to 80, maybe 10 or 15 different DC fast charge recordings, record them all so I can do a deep dive video and explain to people how well the Equinox charges uh, from a different state of charge. And I have to do this on 150 kilowatt and 350 kilowatt DC fast chargers because the Equinox's battery is an unusually low voltage, it's gonna behave differently on those two uh, levels of, of power that the chargers are. So I wanna to try to explain that to people. So I've been primarily DC fast charging. And I just plugged it in on the Tesla Universal Wall Connector a few days ago, just to give it a little bit of a boost, and I got this error. So I unplugged it, and then I plugged in my Ford Charge Station Pro. The error was uh, still in the vehicle. It hadn't cleared. Uh, and so then I said, well, this is really weird. Let me try the Grizzly. So I took Grizzly off the wall, plugged it in, plugged the vehicle in, same thing. It was not charging on any of those chargers. I'm 100% certain. So I let the vehicle power down, came back out maybe 10 minutes later, plugged it in, still wouldn't accept any charge. So I'm like, all right, there's a problem with this car. It won't AC charge. And I probably would have realized that earlier if I AC charged it. I've owned it for like two and a half, three weeks now, but I haven't AC charged it. So I wouldn't know if say the onboard charger had some kind of a problem. And that's why I put out the short. So what I did was I just let the car power down completely. 
I went and had dinner. I came back uh, about 45 minutes later, and I didn't even try to use the Tesla Universal connector because I thought that might have been what caused the problem because it was the first one I used to plug in. And I just used my Ford Charge Station Pro, and it worked fine. It was able to charge. So I was like, okay, um, whatever problem was there, cleared. And um, I wasn't going to use the Tesla Universal wall connector until I kind of figured this out. Now, I know that the Tesla Universal wall connector and the, test, the Gen 3 Tesla, regular Tesla wall connector, has occasionally uh, compatibility problems with vehicles. You read some of the online forums. I've seen BMW EVs have compatibility problems, Rivian, a whole bunch of them. Uh, but I use this charger here to charge my Chevy Bolt EV all the time. So I wasn't expecting there to be a compatibility problem with, with my um, Equinox. I actually use this to charge my Rivian and even my Lightning primarily because when I pull those vehicles in, they're big vehicles. I park them on this side of the garage and this is the closest charger and the charge port is right in the front of the vehicle. So it's easier for me to grab this and the, the wall connectors cable so thin, it's easier than unplugging this kind of big, heavy, clunky thing and walking it around. Yes, this will charge the Lightning a little bit faster, but honestly, when I'm home, most cases, sometimes I need to charge fast and I'll use this, but in most cases, the, the 48 amps that this delivers just fine. So here I am thinking this is kind of strange, but I know there are occasionally compatibility problems with this. So let me uh, dig a little bit deeper into this. And I, I found online a lot of people complaining about um, compatibility problems, but Tesla has a fix for this. They have something they call compatibility mode because they are aware that there's compatibility problems. And the interesting thing is compatibility issues is how I got into reviewing chargers in the beginning. I've been driving EV since 2009 and early on around 2010, 2011, I started noticing that some EVs wouldn't char charge on certain chargers. There was compatibility issues like a BMW wouldn't charge on a Leviton charger and the Nissan Leaf wouldn't charge from an Eaton or, or you know, I'm just throwing names out there. But um, so I started doing testing for compatibility here in my garage. And I actually had automakers reach out to me and say, you know, um, do you know if there's a problem with this car and this charger? And uh, it actually ended up being where I had two automakers that I was in constant contact with. And every time I got a new charger, I would report to them and say, look, this seems to work fine on your, your EVs, uh, but I'm having trouble with this EV. And that's what got me started on reviewing EVs, uh, chargers. It was compatibility problems. Now, we don't really have those anymore. Just about every charger works on just about every electric vehicle. Um, but the Tesla products do have issues with some J1772 vehicles. So Tesla created this compatibility mode. And let's take a look at what they say about it on their website and how you uh, put your charger in compatibility mode. Okay, so this is in the charging access control area, and it tells you to follow these steps. You find access control on the Tesla app. You sign into your Tesla app and navigate to access control. And then you have a few options. You could select all vehicles, only Tesla vehicles, authorized Tesla vehicles only. And that would be if the charger was located in a public area and you didn't want unauthorized use. If it's in your private garage, you, you wouldn't have to worry about any of these options really. But you might have to worry about the last one, which is compatibility mode. And this option allows your wall connector to be compatible with older software versions. Use it if you experience faults with your wall connector and your electric vehicle. State of Charge is powered by Qmerit. After I've helped you decide which electric vehicle charging equipment you're going to buy, follow the link in the description of my videos and let the EV charging installation professionals at Qmerit install it. Now this universal wall connector here was not set up in compatibility mode. And why wasn't it? It was because I never had a problem with it. And I charge all different electric vehicles here in the garage. I get loans from all the manufacturers. And quite honestly, this is the charger that I typically use because it's, as I mentioned earlier, just easier to use. And I park on this side of the garage and um, I don't need to use the Ford Charge Station Pro. It delivers more power than what most of the vehicles can accept. And uh, this is what I typically use. I've never had a compatibility issue with any of the vehicles. I've charged vehicles from 
at least a dozen, probably more different automakers. Never had a compatibility problem, so I didn't put it in compatibility mode. I knew that that was out there, but honestly, I didn't think it was the issue here, especially because after trying it on this, it wouldn't work on the other two chargers. But evidently, when this threw that fault in my Equinox, that fault hung on for a little while, and it took the vehicle completely powering down and say going to sleep for it to clear the error. So I went into my Tesla app, selected compatibility mode, and I've been charging with it the last couple of days just to make sure there's no issue. Now, occasionally, it does say charging station fault. That comes up, but it clears in like a second or two, and the vehicle charges fine. So that eliminated whatever issue was going on. It is just surprising to me that um, GM hasn't vetted this and worked out the problem already because we know GM is in talks with uh, Tesla for charging compatibility. I mean, for the supercharger, for NAX access, so like all the OEMs are. So they have a charging team that's talking to Tesla's charging team. And this could have been brought up months ago, last year, could have said, oh, you know, we, we, we found this uh, problem with the wall connector. Let's iron this out so customers don't have to put it in compatibility mode. I'm sure General Motors knew about it because all the OEMs now at this point have sophisticated labs where they test pretty much all the chargers on the market. Back in the early days when I was doing it, the manufacturers didn't have that yet because they really weren't selling many electric vehicles. But now they test for compatibility with just about everything out there. They certainly test for compatibility with the most popular chargers on the market. Maybe not all of them, but the Tesla Universal Wall Connector is like in the top three, maybe top three or top five for sure of the volume of chargers being sold today. You know, charge points up there, the Grizzle E is up there, the Emporia is up there. Some of the big name brands are, you know, it's inexcusable for the manufacturers to not have checked to make sure that there's no compatibility. And the fact that GM's already working with Tesla on charging compatibility, it's a little disappointing that this is an issue and you have to put your wall connector in compatibility mode. If you're thinking about getting an Equinox, probably a Chevy Blazer EV2 or a Silverado, they probably have most of the same electronics. Don't be afraid to get the Tesla Universal Wall Connector if you want to. If you put it in compatibility mode, you're not gonna have an issue with it, or at least I, I don't expect you will. It solved my problem here, so I would imagine that it would solve yours also. All right, well that's all for my Tesla Universal Wall Connector compatibility mode update. Uh, I just felt the need to get something like this out there because I've had quite a few people message me that, Tom, I've got an Equinox on order. I planned on getting the Tesla Universal Wall Connector. Are you telling me I shouldn't get it now? Uh, and my answer to that is, no, I wouldn't uh, tell you not to get it. There's other options out there for sure, but I understand the allure of the Universal Wall Connector. A lot of people think that perhaps their next vehicle is going to have a native NAX inlet, so why not get a charger that can uh, charge today's EV and also next year's EV, and I understand that 100%. So uh, no, don't feel like you shouldn't get it. It will work, but I would suggest when you commission the charger to immediately put it in compatibility mode and you shouldn't have any issues. Well, that's it for the uh, compatibility mode video here today. Listen, if this is your first time here at State of Charge, please hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming electric vehicle news and reviews. And as always, thanks for watching.